Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. Today we'll be looking at a section from a snail, concentrating on the general anatomy and organs present in the section. As usual, you can find a digital version of this slide on the website at downthescope.co.uk. There's a direct link in the video description. Before we look at some snail anatomy and histology, let's think about what a snail is. Broadly, snails are a type of mollusk, which puts them in the same phylum as squid and mussels. Some people might refer to snails as gastropods, which is the class. But this classification includes a broad range of organisms, as you can see from this phylogenetic tree. Up here we have the land snails in Panpulmonata, but all of these other organisms, from sea snails to periwinkles, are also gastropods. In fact, the taxonomy of snails can get very confusing. Ultimately, most land snails belong to the order Stylomaptophora. This group of organisms has been around since the Cretaceous period. There are around 20,500 species of Stylomaptophora, which will include slugs and a hodgepodge of other families of organisms. Basically, the term snail is almost analogous to the term rodent or other general taxonomic group. Snails come in all shapes and sizes but retain a similar body plan between them. The specimen that we're looking at today is from the genus Helix, which is a genus of European and Mediterranean land snails containing around 30 species. A famous member of the genus is Helix pomatia, the principal ingredient for the dish escargot. If we look at the slide, we can begin to orientate ourselves. In this specimen, the characteristic shell has been removed for ease of processing. We can identify the head over here, by the presence of structures we would associate with the mouth, such as the radula, which means that the other end of the specimen, over here, must be, well, the other end of the snail. Since we used the radula to orientate ourselves, let's start off with the gastrointestinal tract, which is filling up most of this slide. Just over here we can see the entrance to the snail's mouth. If we zoom in, we can appreciate a laminated layer of acellular material sitting on top of some very columnar looking cells. Just down here is the acellular layer, and here are the very columnar looking cells. This is the oral cavity, with the acellular material presumably there to protect the snail's soft tissue from the tough fibrous plant material it's eating. As in many other animals, digestion begins with a mechanical grinding step. Rather than having rows of teeth, the snail has an organ called the radula, which we can appreciate just here. We can see it here is a pyramidal shaped organ covered by serrated acellular material here, which can be scraped back and forth over the food material to break it down. The movement of the radula is controlled by the pharyngeal muscle which we can see attached to the radula. Around the mouth and pharynx there are some aggregates of large vacuolated cells. These are salivary glands. Moving aborally or away from the mouth in the specimen, we can see some large dilated chambers, such as this one here, another one here, here, some more down here. These dilated chambers are the stomach and intestines of the snail. If we zoom in, a bit too much, there we go, we can see that they're lined by large columnar cells. Some of them appear to contain mucus, like this one here, there's another kind of goblet looking type cell here, just as in the intestines of other species that we've looked at. While we're here we can also have a quick look at uh, what the snail was eating. As you can see there are large rafts of yeasts with spores, I think these kind of darker red structures are the spores, and then all of these kind of branching empty structures are pseudo-hyphae. If we have another little scan around, there's some, probably some more typical plant material, uh, such as this here. Next to the intestinal tract, there's another large organ with lots of smaller lumens. This is the hepatopancreas. We saw in another video that arachnids also have an organ called a hepatopancreas, which looks quite similar uh, in that there are lots of large cells with uh, very granular cytoplasm, like these ones here. 
While the hepatic pancreas in snails also has a role in digestion, I doubt that these organs are completely analogous since arachnids and snails are so distantly related. All the other organs that we can see in this specimen are towards the head. There are some aggregates of neural tissue, such as this ganglion we can appreciate here, uh, in which you can see lots of neuronal cells surrounding a, a rather empty space of neuropil. Just adjacent to that, there's this large organ here occupying a good portion of the head. This is the snail's kidney with a tubular structure just in front of it, which is the primary ureter. Between the kidney and the intestinal tract, just up here, there is a, a hollow oval structure with a thin muscular looking wall. This is the snail's heart, which will pump its blood around the snail's circulatory system. Holding everything together, the snail has an integumentary system as well. As in other animals, there is an epidermis, formed by the single layer of cells here, underneath which we can see these huge mucus-filled cells which will be keeping the skin moist. So this whole structure here is one cell with the nucleus down here and the mucoid content. We can see it's emptying out onto the skin surface here. And then below the mucus filled cells, there's a thin muscle layer. The composition of snail skin changes depending on which part of the body you're looking at. If we look at the ventral aspect of the snail, the part that would be in contact with the ground, we can see that there are much fewer mucus cells below the epidermis. And there's a thicker muscular layer with different orientation of the muscle fibres. And below that, there's a secretory gland which extends all the way along the snail's ventrum. We can also make out this large blood vessel here between the muscle and the secretory gland, which also flows along the, on the, along the snail's ventrum. And in some sections, we start to get what looks like a, a nerve fibre here. This makes me think that this is a very median section from the snail meaning that it's taken straight down the middle. Obviously we're missing some important structures from this slide. In the head you would might expect to see uh, eyes or tentacles. Land snails also have a lung with which they breathe and mature snails have a large and complex array of reproductive organs full of weird sized and shaped cells. As with other animals, my plan is to make a video on each of the organ systems, looking more closely at the histology and anatomy while relating it to the function. Hopefully I'll be able to expand the number of slides available with more sections of snails that show the different organs not visible on this slide. If you'd like to make a contribution to purchasing more slides or to the cost of running the website with the digital slides, then I'll leave a link to my Buy Me A Coffee account uh, in the description, or you can donate via the website in the supporters section. As usual, you can contact me with any questions you have about the videos or the slides, either in the comments below or via the website. I sometimes take a few days to respond, but I'll get round to it eventually. Or you can support the channel in other ways, for example by subscribing. It's always nice to see new people looking out for these videos, as infrequent as they are. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to some more content on snail histology and anatomy. So until next time, goodbye.